uh, feature that uh, has been developed uh, recently and is going out uh, as we speak at KubeCon Europe uh, for the tech preview. But first, uh, as you can see, uh, Rancher Desktop has the UI where you can actually do several things. First, you can do some port forwarding if you have Kubernetes services. Then the images uh, will allow you to see all the images that are uh, already cached on your uh, Rancher desktop for uh, both Docker or containers and uh, Kubernetes. One good feature that you can already use from the images page is actually you will be able to scan the image by clicking the three dots and click scan. From here, it will use the 3V um, scanner uh, created by AquaSec and after some time we will see the results. Here it is. So we can see all the results and all the vulnerabilities that has been found. Like we have 96 and two critical. So this will help you really ensure that your images that are deployed in production or on your machine are actually safe or not in this case. Then uh, the second me or the, s the first menu, it will be the troubleshooting. Troubleshooting will be able to show, uh, see some logs if you have some issues with them. And you can also reset Kubernetes, meaning like you will put Kubernetes at the initial state. Finally, if you really have some issues with the behavior of Rancher Desktop, you will be able to, to factory reset directly. An important uh, tab is diagnostics which allow you to see if you have misconfigurations. So this will not be diagnostics of your services on Kubernetes or your Docker uh, containers. It will be more diagnostics on the configuration of Rancher Desktop itself, okay? The last tab, I will keep it for last. So let's see the dented wheel. The dented wheel is the, the settings. And from here, you will be able to, to actually configure Rancher Desktop. First, you will have the application tab where you can see that you can enable or disable the automatic updates. Add some statistics for us. It's uh, anonymous and uh, it's really just only used for, um, for, for us to improve Rancher Desktop. And then we have the behavior. We can enable or disable the fact that Rancher Desktop will start at the login. Remember, if you do choose to enable it, all the containers and Kubernetes will also start at uh, your login. So it might uh, impact somehow your performances. Then here you see WSL. That's because I'm running currently Windows and Rancher Desktop on top of it. But this uh, tab will actually be different. And for Mac and Linux, you will have another tab called VM, Virtual Machine where you will be able to actually manage how much resources are you allocating to, to the virtual machine. Then we have container engine. Here you will see that we have the two co main container engines, containerd and dockerd, uh, Mobi, the open source project. So you are not under any subscription limit here. It's really like the OSS project uh, that we are uh, using. and. On the allowed image, that's really a very useful feature. It will allow you to actually limit the provenance of the images. This means that if you add some uh, pattern or some image, then you will only be able to pull it out. We will demo that just after. Finally, one of the main and more uh, important features will be Kubernetes. And here you will be able to actually enable or disable Kubernetes. And then you will be also able to actually choose which version do you want. So this is really important, especially when you are thinking in, into an end-to-end practice where a developer will might need to create or debug an application that is running on a specific version. So here we do not use Kubernetes latest. We can really choose whatever you have and whatever you need to be aligned with the production. And you can also choose the Kubernetes API port just in case. And by default, we enable also traffic for all the ingress um, connectivities. So here, what I will do is that now that we have Rancher Desktop deployed, we can also see now an important uh, and the newest feature 
uh, tab, which is extensions. Extensions are brand new. They are still in tech preview. So from, from now, we have three uh, extensions that we ensure are working perfectly. So here, if I click on the first one, which is Epino, also created by, by Sousa, you can see uh, some, um, some descriptions, uh, print screen about the application. But what we really need here, it will be to click the install button. And of course, it's important to see which version of the extension is deployed. It we, it's not the version of the app itself. So here, I will click install. Once I click install, normally you see like the, the wheel going on. At some point in time, it will tell me that it's installed and uh, extension right now. And the extension now actually appears below. So by clicking on it, I can click on Epino. And now I have the application Epino that is deployed atop my Kubernetes. And now to have the application, I do install. And this will install now the Epino um, custom resource that is needed. And that will help you actually deploy any application from uh, a GitHub repo or from your development without any YAML. So that's the really important here is that you don't have to create any uh, default application for Kubernetes. You, you, you write your application, and then you can use Epino to actually deploy it atop Kubernetes. So after some time, you will see that the, the Epino here uh, will go through. So it will just take some, uh, some few minutes. So let us actually do some promotion. So you can find the latest tech preview. You can, do the, uh, you can find the latest tech preview in uh, in the web. Okay. Just a second. Yeah. Just a second. So you can find you can find the latest tech preview in the GitHub page at github.com rancher sandbox slash or rancher dash sandbox slash rancher dash sandbox slash releases, and you will see the latest rancher desktop 1.9 tech preview. Again, this is a tech preview, so if you need it to deploy in a uh, developer's machine for production use, then please uh, remain with the, the release, the latest release, which is 181. So after that, we can see that Epino is still being installed. Once it's, uh, it's installed, we will see that the, the UI will show us a couple things. First, it will show us the UI in a browser with the username and the passwords. And then we will be able to also see which version of Epino actually has been installed. So behind the scenes, what it's doing is uh, pulling some images and it's uh, being deploying it. So it still might take some, uh, some quick uh, times. So while it's doing, oh, here we go. So here it installed fully. And now you can see we have the button open that is available. So if I click on it, it will say that our connection isn't private. This is normal because the certificate is self-signed. So you can just click on advance and continue to the, to the page you wanted to, to load. And from here, you will be able to log in as a local user with the uh, admin as a, um, as a user and passwords as the passwords, as it was stated in the, um, in the Rancher Desktop UI. And here you can see we fully deployed Epino without any command line or uh, anything directly from the Rancher Desktop. Another one, another feature that is really uh, important and maybe almost unknown is that from from the menu that you you might see at your um, at your uh, uh, menu taskbar you will see the rancher desktop dashboard and the dashboard actually if you know rancher manager it will look really familiar 
because it's a quite light rancher manager that is available. And from here, you will be able to, again, see the content of our Kubernetes uh, cluster. And here, if I enter, you will be able to see how much CPU, how much memory, and the pods that are uh, using the consumption. And from there, you can really um, you can really manage your Kubernetes resources if needed. That concludes the, the demo. So I hope you, you enjoyed it. Please feel free to download the, the latest version of Rancher Desktop and uh, pass by the booth at D1 at KubeCon uh, Europe. Thank you all.